All right, so continuing our project from last time, the house, the part where we ended up was that when you press the play button, it goes to the gate. When you press the uh, help button, it goes to help. Now, the help screen, uh, most likely I'll leave it for you to complete in terms of when you go to the help screen, I wanna go back to home screen. Now that's the exact concept that we've seen before with the other game. So um, I'll leave you to look to, to complete help on your own. We'll, we'll continue here. Now someone's computer is beeping, so you want to mute your computer if it's making noises, please. So um, what we want to do here in the gate is I want to tap the gate and it opens up. And this is our first puzzle, which is simply tap stuff and stuff happens. On the next screen, we'll get more complex, which is you're not going to go through the front door. You're going to break the window. So we'll get to that. But before we get to that, we need to open the door. And what I want to do with this is introduce the concept of being able to interact with your environment in terms of there is a gate that I want to tap it and I just don't want to go from this screen to the next screen. I want the gate to open. I want it to animate it open. I want it to play a sound, a nice creaking sound as it opens and then go to the next screen. So this will be a little bit more interactive and and sort of uh, immersive in that the door will actually open. In order for that to work, we need to turn the gate into a symbol. And then when it's a symbol, it can have its own built-in animation and sound. So that when we click or tap on the gate, it plays the animation of the door opening plus the music playing, and then it moves to the next scene. And we're gonna see that concept several other times. Remember I mentioned when we're on this, when we're in the hallway over here, there's a painting right there. That's going to be an example of they can they can touch the painting and then it'll fall and break. It won't really affect the game, but we will have some interactivity in that that's something to tap on and it'll animate. You know, it'll animate it like shaking on the wall for a moment when a person taps it. They tap it again and then it falls, that'll animate, and then it breaks, and then the sound of glass. So what, what we're going to see here is interacting with the environment so that it has its own animation and sound. So let's go over to the gate and we'll set ourselves up here to make this work. Okay, so a few, a few logical things we need to talk about. Um, things that we can interact with need to be symbols. I drew this, we drew this as just one big thing. But the cool thing about Adobe Animate is you can relatively easy separate things up. I want to be able to tap on the gate only. Um, maybe later I'll make it that I tap on the number of the house and something happens, but maybe later. I want to tap on the gate, and when you tap on the gate, I want it to then animate open, and it takes us to the next scene. So we need to separate the gate from the rest of the scene. So one way that I would do this is we've got the lasso tool and I'm gonna make a lasso selection something like this I'm gonna go all the way around um, the gate and whatever part of the gate um, is gonna be the clickable part so uh, it's hard to see my selection but let me zoom in there I've I've drawn a selection with the lasso tool so a freehand selection around the gate and however you drew yours there's no wrong answer it's just that make a selection around the area that you want people to click on that's the big idea so I've made a selection of the gate I'm gonna control X to cut it into memory I will make a new layer and paste in place in that new layer so once you've selected it control X to cut it or right click cut new layer and then right click paste in place so technically I've got the gate background so I'll remove I'll rename this background um, in just a moment and then I've got the gate in its own layer so I, I've made a brand new layer and then I did paste in place and I've got two separate things Hmm. 
Okay, so... So I've got it, the layer of gate, which I'll call gate background. And I move the gate to its own layer, so I can call that gate. And so again, I did a selection and then I cut it, not just a copy. You want to do a cut and then you can do right click, paste in place. So the background is its own layer and the gate is its own layer. Now that the, now that the gate is on its own layer, um, I'm going to lock the background layer. I'm going to select everything in the gate layer and turn that into a symbol, F8 or right click, convert it to symbol. Call this MC gate. So the drawing of the gate in its own layer turned into a symbol with some name, MC gate, movie clip gate. And then that needs an instance name. So as you do this more often, you'll, you'll not forget to do these things. Because naming it in the library is one thing, but then having an instance name is another. So I'll call this gate underscore mc. So now it has an instance name. So then I write some code it will um, be able to react. And the reaction that I want is that I'm going to tap on the gate, the door will swing open, play a sound, and then take us to um, the next scene, which is scene door. So this is the setup we needed to do here. The gate, it's on its own layer. It's its own thing. Because it's its own symbol, its own object, I can then uh, do different things with it, such as animating it. And the way we'll, we can do this is, now that it's a symbol there on your timeline, you can double click it. That takes us to symbol editing mode. So up here it tells us you're currently editing the gate, which is inside of, you're an MC gate, which is inside of scene gate. You can go back. So everything fades out to show you that this is what you're focused on. This part out here is not part of the symbol. We're working in a timeline now of this particular object. So in this part here is one of the parts where you can spend more time a little later to perfect it. But what I want to do is do a simple animation of it opening. And based on how you drew it, you're, you're going to figure out some way that, that it opens, but I'll show you the example here. And first of all, down here uh, on our timeline, I've got frame one. Uh, let's go over to frame five, and we'll press F6 to insert a keyframe. The way we will do this is we kind of have to figure out a little bit of a way about how do I want to animate the door opening or sliding up or falling down or whatever way you want to animate this. I'm going to make it open up like the door opens up. So uh, I'll draw a few frames of it opening up. And the way I would do this perhaps is maybe I'll set myself up a little bit first to um, maybe I'm going to delete the um, Maybe I'm going to delete sort of like the inside of things first. Let me show you what I mean here. Let me do this really fast and I'll show you what I mean. I just want to get the shape of the door. So I'm going to do this trick here. After I do it, I'll explain what I'm doing. Uh, I need to kind of redraw my door a little bit in order to make it look like it swings out. So in order to do that, The inside part, the 
the inside part, I'm deleting it. The point of this is for me to have sort of like a clean slate so I can then draw the door opening up. So right now it looks weird because the door is empty. Obviously in my previous frame the door is there and in the next do door it's gone because then I'm going to draw it um, starting to open up like this. Uh, the door is starting to open over here. Again, I'll draw the details of it later. But the, uh, the first frame, the door is closed. Drawing another frame where I'm making it slightly open. I have to use the ideas of like um, animation in terms of moving something a little bit at a time. And then I'll go to the next frame and then make that open up just a little bit more as well and uh, keep going with that. Okay, so this particular frame <clears throat> uh, has been opened a little bit more, and then I'll go to the next frame to F6, and then draw it open a little bit more, and then the next frame a little bit more. Now, knowing that it's going to open completely, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Right now I started to draw one frame and then the next frame. Well, I could also do it like this. If I plan it, let me let me take it back like this. Before I even draw the the complete door, I know that that part's going to stay the same, but then the door's going to open a little bit, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more. So what if, before I start drawing it, what if I, I make copies, what if I F6, a few frames like that, so that I have this empty doorway, so that I can open it a little bit, and then draw it opening a little bit more, and draw it opening a little bit more. How much you want to open it is going to be up to you. How you want to animate it, that is. I think I'll do three frames. Opening a little, opening a little bit more, open completely. Maybe three frames. Because the very first frame is of it completely closed. The next frame is going to be opening a little bit more. Third frame, opening some more. Fourth frame, completely open. So ultimately, on the fourth frame, I'm going to have the door completely opened like this. It's going to be on the other side over here. And again, I'm, I'm drawing all of this just um, black and white with no colors filled in. And the perspective of things, because it's all black and white see-through, will, will look something like that. But when it's fully complete, you'll, you'll see that it's complete. So in between, then I'll open up the door a little bit more like I had here. So on the front of the door, it's got like uh, vertical and horizontal lines. But then when the door opens up on the back, it has just horizontal lines. Um, and then a little perspective over here. And then on this one, the door's opened up even more. point of this is when it animates it'll look like this opening like that see I don't have to draw it perfectly the illusion of it as it opens up is close enough and then later on when I have the lab time I'll draw it perfectly but here it is first frame it's closed and then next frame it opens up a little bit and then third frame opens up some more fourth frame it's completely open so if this plays it looks like that I might be going too fast, I could draw more frames. I could add time in between the frames. To slow it down, I could add F5 so that those frames exist two times. And now it'll open up a little slower. If you have one frame for each change, it moves fast. But if you have a blank keyframe, F5, in between them, it opens a little slower. 
the door starting to open up. So practice that uh, for a quick moment, trying to open that up. I did it in 10 frames. You could do more, you could do less. But you see the idea is we've got a few different frames. Three frames is enough to make it look like it's kind of opening. You can also use the perspective tool to transform things. That'll work as well.